just ask good to see you. I hope that you're feeling a little better today and uh, much better. Much better. My doctor said they had to take an appointment for me to see a heart specialist. Let me get back there. My hearing is not that good, but I can pick you up from there. Say, say that again. some evening when we have our regular worship with our young people and get playing with our young people. Church, this is a Bible study tonight, but we have a lot of young people get acquainted. All right. Praise the Lord. 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 Jesus, oh Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus. <coughs> I wonder if we could just pray. Everybody just pray and seek the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come to you. And we're grateful that we can pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray under the inspiration of the Almighty. Pray and knowing that you will hear us, that you do hear us, O oh God, that you do look upon us, you do see us. And tonight we know that we have so many needs so many, many needs. We know that we have people that need you, Lord, more than they ever have in our midst. I think each one of us here tonight, Lord, cries out unto you, holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Lord, we feel that we need to plead the blood of Jesus in this place over and again over and again over and again plead the blood of Jesus <coughs> plead the blood of Jesus oh Jesus Jesus Holy One Holy God Holy Father we ask you Lord to intervene in the affairs of the church, in every avenue of the church, every person, every soul, every spirit, tear down, pull away the shroud, take away the mist, let there be clarity of vision, let there be, Lord, a drawing nigh unto you. You draw nigh unto us, Oh, Father, we plead the blood for every one of your children, everywhere they may be. Lord, let your children know the sound of your voice, know the cry of your spirit into theirs. Lord, we plead the blood. We plead the blood of Christ. Oh, but we cry out unto the Lord. Our God, praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Lord, we ask you to look down upon us. Tenderness and mercy tonight. Tenderness and mercy in our spirit. 
We're just creatures here below. We're just the children of God beneath the great canopy and covering of our God. Our God. You are our God. You're our high God. You're our holy God. We plead the blood tonight because we have affliction in our midst. We have hospital cases. We have some near death. Souls are in the balance. Eternity is calling. Oh, Jesus, we have need among the people. Cancer is in our midst. We need it conquered in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have to have this cancer conquered. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, we put our hand in your hand. We walk with you. We call upon your name. We lift your name. Say your name. Plead your name. Salvation in none other, other than the name of Jesus. Guide our footsteps. Check us, Lord, if we're going too far. Push us forward if we're lagging back. Boost us, Lord, if we're too far down. Lower us, Lord, if we get too high in ourselves. Rebuke us if necessary. Reprove us with your word if necessary. Oh, but above all, let us walk and let us talk with you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Every need, every need. Every problem, every burden, everything. Lord, every family. Oh, God of Israel, God of Israel. Oh, Jacob's God, Isaac's God, Abraham's God. Our God, you are our God. Lord, come in this Bible study and vigorate and stir and anoint. Let your people be fed. Fed from the word of God. Fed until they're full in the Lord. Until they can take this word and multiply it, masticate it, and digest it. Let it be used in their, their hearts, their spirit, their soul, Lord. Until we come into the kingdom. Until we come into the kingdom. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jerry Baggett, Lord. What are you trying to say to Jerry, Lord? How are you trying to work with Jerry? Oh, let your voice be heard with Brother Jerry Baggett. Heal him, Lord. Raise him up. Mickey in the hospital. Deal with her heart, Lord. Dear Sister Maddox. Yes. You're right, Lord. My God. Sabrina, Lord. Oh. Jesus, Sabrina. Debbie, Lord. Oh, Debbie. Lorraine, Lord. Ella, Lord. All of these children and more. And more. Sister Eustace, Lord. Oh, yes. Touch. Touch Sister Eustace. Touch her. Let her feel the hand of God. Amen. Let her feel the hand of God upon her, Lord. She's a Holy Ghost woman. She trusts you, Lord. She believes you. Jesus, Jesus' name. For the Richard May's son, Marty, Lord. Nearing the time when they're going to 
just take his face apart as it is. And, oh God, let them get that cancer, guide their hands to it. And let them have the skill to repair his face. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we're a strong army. We're a mighty army. We're the army of the living God. We suffer, but we shall reign, Lord. We're not defeated. We're victorious, Jesus. We claim the victory. This new family of the sellers, the guide that make a way for them. In Jesus, sweet name. Praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 He's us. He's us. We worship you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Victory. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel His presence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you. Hallelujah. Praise you. Love us. Praise your name. Thank you. We're victorious. Hallelujah. It's amazing to me as I try to observe the different things I do in the changing years of leading the church. <laughs> and um, my goodness, now they're getting to be quite a few that we've been uh, doing that work. How things uh, have changed from being so simple and we have changed if we're not careful. You look back in your life and evaluate how you were, that's the best way to know if you've changed a lot. Yep. Remember what you were. Then look at yourself now and see how much you've changed. I was. I have a lot of books in my library, and this is one uh, in his own words, uh, William Souders, memory lane, really, collection of his testimonies, his testimonies, the personal testimony of William Souders. And I'd like to share just one or two. And listen, listen at the experience and, uh, and see perhaps uh, how much more sophisticated uh, we have become as the church. Um, this is called the boat, the boot, the boot and the seine. The seine is a fishing net, as you know. The boot and the seine, S-E-I-N-E. -E. <coughs> I had a dream, I had a seine, a large net, Cyrus was a fisherman, a police officer, also boat builder. I had a dream, I had a saying. 
large net in my hand and was going fishing. I got down to the river and I was going out into a deep place. I felt the weight of the boots on me. And I had the same in one hand and pulled off one of my boots and had it in my other hand. I felt myself going down and woke up, sinking on a dry bed going, <sighs> gasping for breath. Then up below he said, Brother Souders had a garden. The boot is the garden and the scene is the gospel. You can't survive trying to do both of them. <laughs> Quite different. <laughs> the boot is the garden. He had a garden. God was dealing with him about putting so much time in that garden. The garden versus the resurrection. I had a dream. I was digging Irish potatoes. They were all crooked and not some. The dry ground and the clods had formed dents in the potatoes. And as I was going along, I saw bowls of fruit with spoons in them, and I began tasting. I was going to run and tell the people about it right there. My father, his earthly father, resurrected out of the ground and was eating with me. Lord, what is it? Again, for instance, his brother Souders had a garden. Son, potatoes is too common a thing for you to food with. For the time is soon coming and the resurrection will take place and you will eat the marriage supper of the Lamb. A drought came, and my potatoes looked like my dream. <laughs> then, uh, here is a, I would not lose my salvation for you, I wasn't much more than converted when a ferryman on a river came to me and I told him on the day before, listen, if you can't come in my house and speak good of this people, your absence in my house is more desired than your presence. <clears throat> so I met him the next day and as he jumped out at me, he said, Will Souders, you said something to me yesterday. I won't take off no man. I felt my fist hardening. Brother Souders was a strong man. He was a, he, he was a police officer. I felt my fist hardening and then release. He was just sparring around in front of me. You know. And say, God would not let me do a thing to him. My arms got as limp as a rag, and I said, Say, Jewel, I guess that was his name, I would not lose my salvation for you any time. Amen. Another one of his testimonies. Brother Souders was a unique man. You could listen to him all day, and he would tell how God dealt with him. And it was so simple. He wasn't a complicated person. Very, very simply, and simple in his speaking. That is not uh, without wisdom, without knowledge, but just a very open man. It just knocked me cold. That's the name of this one. My wife had a sore foot. I had to carry her everywhere do my own cooking, washing, ironing, cleaning, and caring for my wife. I was about 10 minutes late one Sunday morning for service. 
there was a preacher and his wife there. She got up and rebuked me in other tongues. And afterwards said in her, her own tongue what she wanted to tell me. Oh, it was awful. And it just knocked me cold. I went down in a slump, had a big Bible stand, and I got my head down behind it and said, oh, my God. I was so crushed down, I could not hardly breathe. Call that being not cold. You ever have an experience like that happen? I have, not the same. I'll finish these two here and we'll go into study. The title on this one say, It Pays to Be a Fool Sometimes. I remember one night over on Broadway, that's where his church was in Louisville, when I had a tent out there, it seemed like that night there was a blackness and darkness of hell was settling down on us, and we just couldn't move. I jumped off the platform and run right out through the aisle. Brother Sellers would do that. Out through the tent, hollering and whooping. Sounds like Brother Sellers. And a fellow in the back of the tent gasping. He thought I was after him. <laughs> I came on by him and came back, and some of the rest of them were shouting, and thank God. The whole tent was turned loose in the Spirit of God, and what a meeting we had. Say, it pays to be a fool sometimes. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Doctors declared that it was supernatural power. When I was 13 years old in the Methodist church, there was a good number of women and men in the church house with their hands lifted and eyes shut. They would walk around with their hands lifted straight up in the air with eyes shut for as much as one hour. And that's true. Or men tying them. And they would turn as white as a shirt would be. Doctors have declared after timing them and seeing them walk for one solid hour that it had to be a supernatural power because natural power would never enable a man or woman to hold their hands up like that for one solid hour. Right. <coughs> I've seen them fall on the floor. I've seen them shout, jump, leap, run, and dance. <coughs> in the Methodist Church. Yep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How it has changed. Yes, yes. it is. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. The final one is, I lost so much blood, my skin was white. I had a illness in my body and God healed me. I had lost so much blood, my skin was white could not walk three blocks. Kept telling God I would not under, uh, undergo an operation. Brother Souders would not. He would not take medicine. He died not taking medicine. Trusting God. I, I kept telling God I would not undergo an operation. I'm going to trust him, live, die, sink or swim. I was going to trust God. Was I a fool? I would rather lose out trusting God than trusting man and losing out. Therefore, I stood firm. And when it seemed there was no chance and it looked like I was uh, done in my ministry, albeit I had strength to go to Henderson, Kentucky. Where that is? Henderson, Kentucky. 
and Brother Aubrey. And I remember old Brother Aubrey. He was way up in years. Uh, the only time I ever saw him. I saw him in Olmstead, Illinois. And Brother Aubrey prayed for me. I was healed in a split second. I had this disease since I was a child of 13. I would lost so much blood, my skin was white. In a split second, God healed me. That's marvelous. Yes, it is. Brother William Souders would not take an aspirin. He died trusting the Lord, believing God. Um, but that was his testimony. In his own words, that's really, really a book I uh, urge you to remember that there were some testimonies those men had. That's what brought the church where it was. That's what brought the church where it was. <laughs> I'm going to do something, a turnabout, and maybe it'll be interesting, maybe it won't. We'll watch God. We'll see His Spirit, if it's in it, and um, if it's not in it, then we'll move away. And we're going to take the Bible, and we're going to start with Genesis. And we're going to take it in sections. I'm going to take it word for word, every chapter. We're going to take it in sections, and what I consider dispensational uh, sections. And we're going to go through into the New Testament over a period of time. And you can ask questions, and we'll, uh, we'll come into a subject matter in that section, uh, starting with the first, second, third chapter of Genesis, and we'll take just parts of that. But before we do that, uh, anyone have a Bible question that you want to ask concerning something you want to know about God's Word, or a doctrine you've heard, or something that you're not clear on, something that you're uh, troubled about as to whether it's the exact truth or not, and you want the truth, the whole truth. So I'm going to pause right here before we go in and, and ask that. All right, Brother Ernest. I believe in the fourth chapter of Isaiah. Fourth chapter of Isaiah, everybody. First verse. Mm -hmm. And in that day, seven women were set forth of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our report. Right. All right. Is that concern the war that was coming up, or do you think it kind of represented the seven churches? Because bread, you take the bread as the word, right? Right. And uh, apparel is a garment. Well, what do you think about that? This scripture is very good. I think it broke a lot of interest in thinking about it. When I was a young man, I heard this scripture interpreted this way, and you probably did too. In the natural, seven natural women taking hold are, and the ministers I heard explain it uh, in the different churches that I attended with my father, and even later when I became a young man, I sat in some ministers' conferences and heard different ministers deal with this. And I heard it preached and heard them preach it. Everyone came back to the natural. They said uh, the time would come when the wars of the earth, and especially the coming war, the uh, what is termed Armageddon, or the Third World War, or the war of all wars that is coming upon the world. They said it would take so many men. In fact, in the Second World War, I remember ministers, there were so many of our boys dying, and a minister occasionally would come on the radio, or he would get in the pulpit, and he would preach that 
uh, the scripture was literally being fulfilled. That seven women now, it was the men were being so decimated by war, or they would be in the future, until there would be seven women that would be multiplied to the one man in an area. And that uh, there would be a problem because manhood would be disappearing and multiplicity of womanhood would be taking the place of man. And they pointed out the scripture was prophecy. It would be fulfilled that way, the natural man, the natural woman. But when you look, as Brother Ernest brought out a key there, that could not be because this is prophecy and it's concerning uh, the nations uh, and, and the purging of the nations um, in, in judgment, but it is, um, it is not dealing with a natural woman. Now, I'll, I'll show you um, the her here. If you notice in the third chapter, um, he's dealing with Israel and how he's going to judge Israel, starting with the 17th verse of the third chapter. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab in the crown at the head of the daughters of Zion, that's Israel. That was the judgment of 70 AD that he was showing and they would be judged in that judgment and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. That was the ceremonial law about their feet and their calls and their uh, round tires. That was jewelry and uh, ornaments they wore, uh, like the moon, the chains, the bracelets, the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, the headbands, the tablets, and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, the mantles, and them and the crisping pens, the glasses, the fine linen, the hoods, the veils. This shows the destruction of a nation uh, for their sins and their economy. Uh, all those things that he mentions there are part of apparel, part of what uh, adorns people, uh, women and men. And he said uh, that, uh, in verse 24, and it shall come to pass Instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. Instead of a girdle, a rent. In other words, a binding, a girdle, it will be torn. It will be a tearing. And instead of well-set hair, that is a covering, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, uh, a girding of sackcloth. In other words, uh, the ordinary garment around the stomach to bind, similar to a girdle. Uh, they would be wearing sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and their mighty in war. And her, now notice her, her gates, that is not a woman. See, her gates, that's not a natural woman. But her gates, that's Israel, that, that her there is Israel and Judaism and the law, shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament, and mourn, and being desolate, shall uh, sit on the ground. Now, notice this day, in the next verse, uh, verse 1 of, of fourth chapter. And, and in that day, in that day, uh, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away Reproach in that day. This is the day of the Lord. In that, when when Jesus Christ came, that started the day of the Lord. That day has been two thousand years long. Yes. The day of the Lord. Now Israel was destroyed in the battle of seventy A.D. I read those verses in chapter three. But in that day, the day of the Lord. Way down here at the end of that day, a day has a beginning, has an end. In the end of the day, and in that day, seven women. I showed you that that was not a natural woman. 
Seven is a complete number. Seven women. In other words, a complete number of women are churches because her in the Bible, the female is likened unto the church. The male is never likened unto the church. Nowhere in the scriptures does it liken the male creation to the church. It's always the female because the female has the power to give birth. The church has the power to give birth. So the, the, the female, the woman, is likened unto the church. Now, this complete number of uh, churches will take hold of one man. Now, who is that one man? That's the mystery. All right, go over to 2 Thessalonians uh, 2 and you'll pick up the one man. The one man is called the man of sin in 2 Thessalonians 2. The one man, see, the man of sin. Uh, he'll be revealed. And he'll be revealed when these seven women are complete number of, of churches that are outside of Christ and his covering. See, these, these women are not under Christ. These churches are not under Christ because no church under Christ will take hold of that one man. That one man will not rule over any church under Christ because Christ is the head of his church. That one man cannot be. Uh, Christ is the head of his church. So in, in 2 Thessalonians 2, he said, uh, it's at verse, um, let, me, uh, let me get it right here. I'll get it uh, in verse 4. Uh, well, let's just take right on down. Now we beseech you, brethren, verse 1, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. That's where people are shaken first. Or be troubled in mind, see, and neither by spirit. See, so when the mind is troubled, the spirit becomes troubled. You were watching a church when people's mind become troubled, the spirit becomes troubled. There's a troubling of the mind, then there's a troubling of the spirit. And, and uh, the scripture said, um, and let me get my verse back here, um, neither by, nor by word. You can be troubled in your mind, you can be by spirit, you can be by word. There's several ways to be troubled. Nor by letter. You can be troubled by writing. As you are in your mind, your spirit, uh, your word, that the day of Christ is at hand. Now he said that back there. Paul would not say that if he were writing that letter today. Paul the Apostle would not say that you don't be troubled. We are to be troubled. We're 2,000 years later than this letter. Paul would not write that letter to the church right now for us not to be troubled. We are to be troubled in our spirit. We're to be troubled by the letters of the Scripture. We're to be troubled in our mind that the day of the Lord is at hand. See, uh, you have to get your time setting here. He wrote that to them because he knew there was 2,000 years from when he wrote that letter. Paul knew the coming of Christ was not then. He knew that. And, and certainly had that knowledge. So he said, don't be troubled uh, by word, letter, spirit, that the coming of Christ at hand, because I'm going to qualify, I'm going to tell you uh, when he is coming. And he said, uh, let no man deceive you by any means, that's usually who deceives people, is man, yep. for that day, that day, the coming of Christ, shall not come. Now that was bold statement for an apostle to make, yes. because they were saying he's coming, he's coming, Christ is appearing. They had him appearing in the desert. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, don't go out in the desert when they say he's in the desert. Don't go in the secret chambers when they say 
he's in the secret chambers. Um, but they were saying Christ was coming back there. They were using that. They twisted the gospel. Man's always twisted God's word. Confused people. Trying to confuse people. We'll confuse people if the Holy Ghost doesn't talk to you. If the Holy Ghost does not show you the truth, you will be confused by what we call religion and churches and ministers. Because all ministers do not say the truth of God's word. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. Amen. I want to be bold about that. All, right. All ministers do not say the truth of God's word. Amen. All churches do not preach All right. Amen. the truth of God's word. Amen. They don't. No, they don't. Amen. Let's be plain about it. Let's right. be open Amen. about it. Yes. They don't preach the truth. Right. They preach something to tickle the ear. Amen. Keep people in the seat. Let them give their money. And to be numbered, but they don't preach the truth right, uh, as it is in Christ. Uh -huh. I can't stand that. I don't want that. I won't have any part of that. Amen. God. Amen. I would go somewhere and pray to myself before I would sit under a man that wouldn't tell me the truth or, or, or be with a church that camouflaged the gospel. Uh, I wouldn't do it. And he said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed that man of sin see one man the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and it, now 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 here you 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 say brother marlon who is that man well, look how Paul describes him. And remember, Paul is speaking in prophecy 2,000 years to cover uh, the day of the Lord, uh, which covered 2,000 years. The day of the Lord covers 2,000 years. And Paul is speaking by prophecy and describing the man of sin. Now, look, let's, let's see what he is. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. There's only one office in religion that fits this prophecy. Only one. It is the Vatican. It is the Vatican where the papal power sits. There's no other leader of religion. There's no other teacher that opposeth and exalteth himself above all, all right. that is called God. Uh -huh. He is the only office, the only office in religion. Even Muhammad did not claim that. Amen. Islam does not claim that. Brigham Young didn't uh, uh, claim that. Uh, Joseph Smith didn't claim that. Uh, he is faultless. He is above all that is called God. The Holy See, the Holy One, he's revered as being the vicar of Christ. Uh, this prophecy is too plain for you to put this in an office. It doesn't belong. It, it belongs where it belongs. Uh, because he said he uh, uh, opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. So that he as God, he as God, he as God sitteth in the temple of God. That is the church, showing himself that he is God. Um, if you have to, to kiss the ring or the toe to be holy, uh, as he is holy, uh, if you have to look at that office, that person, as being infallible, infallible, and this is exactly how this office is magnified, infallible, exalted above all that is called God. Now, the world does not see that revelation yet, but they will see it. 
Amen. They will see it because that man of sin will be taken hold of by the perfect number of churches that are in false doctrine, false teaching, or have false prophets. They will embrace this one office. They're doing it now. Uh, we, we don't teach this enough. We don't preach it enough. Our people don't know this. The average person sitting in our church does not understand this prophecy because we're afraid, we're afraid that uh, uh, we're, uh, someone will say we're speaking against the powers that are, are the powers of religion. But the gospel does speak against yes, false doctrine. Yes, uh, the, the Bible teaches against false prophets. Bible speaks against false churches. And so these seven women, that's a perfect number, will embrace or take hold of this one man. We haven't seen it yet. Many people that received this revelation 20 years ago, 30 years ago, are compromising now. Amen. You'd be amazed at the people that have fell away, fell away from this understanding. Fell away from this truth. They don't know what you mean when you say beast. They don't know what you mean when you say Babylon. They don't know what you mean when you say harlot. They don't know because they don't understand the Bible that there is the virgin church and there's the harlot church. There's the virgin woman. There's the harlot woman. But they don't understand that. But the Bible teaches that. And this, the, these seven women, these are not natural women. This is the perfect number. And when, when it is finished, the number of the beast will be the number of, the man, of, of a man, fulfilling Revelation 13, uh, chapter, will be the number of a man, 600, three score, and six. Six, six, six. That's the number of man. When the perfect number of women are joined together, as Isaiah said they would be, but they will say, let us eat our own bread. Bread is doctrine. Bread is the word of God. Now, if you take the word of God and you make it a church doctrine, it's still bread, but it's man's bread instead of God's bread. See, if you take the word of God and you interpret it and twist it and make it to where it is false, but it feeds man, doesn't feed the true church. It's still bread, but it's man's bread. It's leaven, but it's the leaven of the Pharisee. And Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Did he not? And they thought it was meant bread, that they forgot to take bread. But he was speaking of the doctrine or the leaven, or the bread, of the Pharisees. Right. We'll eat our own bread. In other words, we'll still be by our denominational title. Don't take our bread. We'll wear our own apparel. We'll still have the name of our church. But behind the name and behind the bread will be them taking hold of this one man, the man of sin. And they will wear their own apparel. They'll still keep their own uh, outside look, their own name, their own denomination. But they'll take hold of that one man. This is what Isaiah was referring to. And is that the mark of the beast? And that is the mark of the beast. Uh, there's three ways you take the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation. You take it in the, in the hand. Uh, you take it in the forehead and you take it by the number of the name. The hand is the embracing of fellowship with a false church, a false denomination, a false prophet, becoming a member of that by the right hand of fellowship, taking it in your hand, fellowship, in your forehead, not on, in, in your forehead is accepting the doctrines, teachings, 
and understanding of that system called the beast opposite the virgin church. And the third way you take it is to become a part of that by membership so that you are taking it by the number of the name of the beast. Three ways. I know preachers have interpreted and said that's a scanner over here in a market, uh, that they're going to make you take something, put some kind of ink on your hand or put a, a something under your skin and uh, when you go through that line they'll scan that and if you have that uh, mark you can buy and sell and if you don't have it uh, you can't. That, that, that isn't, uh, the buying and selling is not the food. You can get food as long as man is crooked and black marketing and you can pay them enough money you can get something to eat. You, you, they, they'll sell you something. That isn't the natural. The Bible isn't dealing in the natural. Uh, the, the scripture said, buy the truth and sell it not. We're, we're buying and selling here. We're not doing it with the mark of the beast because, and we won't do it with the mark of the beast. Uh, if we have to do it with the mark of the beast, uh, we'll refuse to do it. We won't buy and sell uh, with their mark. Right. Uh, we, we, we won't be under their system. So, uh, you know, it, it, these, this is not natural. This is spiritual. By the truth. Uh, in the 25th chapter of Matthew, when the foolish virgins found they didn't have enough oil, what did the wise virgins say? Go, go to them that sell and buy for yourselves. That was oil or knowledge. See? Go to them that sell and buy, for you should buy the truth and sell it not. So this is, all right, let's slow down and get questions. Brother Rick, comment. I just want to thank you for that revelation, Pastor Merrill, because I have uh, been dealing with that for so long, about that mark of that beast like that, and that makes total sense to me, what you just said about it. You know why? Because you've got a revelation, and, and a revelation witnesses in your spirit. Yep, so That's why it does, uh, and I'm so glad because a uh, man has so misinterpreted that scripture in the Bible, and he's had people, one one minister I heard, he has 30,000 members in his church in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he also got caught and sent to jail the other day. Uh, uh, but, uh, but he came out and told his congregation he wasn't guilty, and they all shouted. Uh, but he was arrested anyway. Uh, not, not for a godly cause either. Uh, that revelation was so was, was so good to me because I've often I know that God is a just God and that He would not judge us for something that we were tricked into. That's right. He would like not Mark. do that. He is just and fair. Right. God must be just and God must be fair. Right. And uh, the 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 thing is, if you were tricked and deceived into getting something, or you were forced are subjugated to getting uh, uh, something implanted under your skin uh, or, or uh, an invisible uh, ink uh, that could not be erased, but they could check you whether you had the mark of the beast or not. That would be unfair right. to the individual. There would be no fairness in that. Right. Uh, there's not, not, not the fairness of God in that. That's Revelation 13. Uh, Revelation 13 and 16 deals with the mark of the beast that no man could buy or sell. We're living right now in Isaiah 55, Lord. No oh, everyone that's come. Isaiah 55 says, Ho, oh, oh, him that is thirsty? Isaiah 55, yes. That's what Sister Mark. Right We're living in that day right now. Ho, if you're thirsty. Ho, get your attention. The Spirit of God says, Ho. If you're thirsty, come and drink, and without and buy without money, and without price. See, come and buy and drink now. We're living in that time. If you're thirsty, if you're hungry, ho, oh, come and buy, and drink, and buy without money, wine, and and uh, drink, uh, without money and without price, bread, uh, the word of God. So. Uh, now let me see uh, where we are here, Sister Shirley over here. I may get, be getting ahead of myself and you, but and 
I really don't know how to uh, to uh, to ask the question. But as you was teaching this, does that have to do with we know changes are coming about in the church? Yes, they are. In this church, they are. Now, I don't want to get ahead, and, you know, of our teaching, and I know we have to be taught uh, step by step. So, does this go along with the, the changes that's going to come forth in the church? It does, Sister uh, Sherry, because the church, that's another change, the church cannot go on saying we're teaching the truth unless we teach the truth. And teaching the truth is going to bring change upon change. Uh, we, if we eat our bread and uh, it's the true bread, the true word of God, and we eat that bread, it's going to produce change. While the same thing, they are eating their bread in the Babylonian system, and it's producing change in them. They're going toward embracing the one man, the man of sin. And when they do embrace the man of sin, he will be revealed. You say, Brother Marlowe, why isn't he revealed now? <coughs> because the women, the seven women, the complete number of the church systems that will endorse him merge into that office and say, we accept the papal power as being the Holy Father. We accept him as being, that as being the Holy See. He is infallible. When they do that, when they do that, and they're going to do that, that is a true prophecy. That is a true, and, and here's the deceiving part about it, because right now we don't see the merging, the coming together of those women into that one man, but while we don't see it, it's happening. Amen. And it's going to happen. And when it comes to pass, then the world will see, and all of God's children that hold this revelation will see that one man, those seven women, have taken hold of him, but they won't change the name of, I don't want to call names of churches, but the name, uh, the name of the church will remain the same. Uh, the bread they eat will still be their bread. They'll still eat their doctrine. They'll wear their apparel. Yeah. But they'll say, let us be called by thy name. And that name will be the harlot or the beast. <coughs> the Bible calls it both, the beast and the harlot. Um, they, 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 we call that. That will be the name. It won't be the name of Jesus. See, they won't be saying, let us be called by the name of Jesus. Okay. The only people will be doing that will be those that are going into the kingdom of God and those that are striving for the bride of Christ are, are the wise virgins. They will be saying, let us be called by your name, the name of Jesus. They'll refuse to take any other name. They'll never belong to that system. If you get this revelation in your heart, you will never let a preacher, you will never let a group, you will never let a system talk you into becoming a member of that system. You will not take the mark of the beast. You will not take it in your hand. You won't take it in your forehead. You won't take the number of the name. Uh, you may have other imperfections in you, but you'll be perfect in that because you will not eat that bread and you will not wear that apparel. All right. Brother, let me ask you, how's this sounding, Brother? I'm just going to say I appreciate you uh, bringing it out like that. I was thinking it represented churches, but I weren't sure. Um, but how is that going to take away their reproach? Uh, they think it's going to. They just think it's going to take away their reproach. They right? think it will, because here's the reproach. Here's the reproach of Pentecostalism. Here's the reproach of Protestantism. See, there's three ism, <coughs> Catholicism, Pentecostalism, and Protestantism. Three isms. And all three have reproach. They have reproach because they're divided. They fought one another. Uh, 
they, they have blood on their history, in their history. Um, they have blood, even the martyr of, of saints, in their history. Uh, they have been divided uh, one time, two times, five times. Um, someone said, oh, that church. I, I told a minister, again, I don't want to be calling names, but uh, this minister, uh, he was talking with me, and he said, we've never been divided. Our organization has never been divided. He didn't know that I read church history, I suppose. I said, you have been divided. I said, you want me to take you to the books and show you? Um, the library and show you? The library and the catalog of religions, Washington, D.C., that you've been divided six times? Six times you've split? Uh, you say you've never been divided? You split six times. Uh, did you know everything that man has divides? Only Christ brings together. All right. Only Jesus Christ. All right. And when you see a body of people uh -huh. dividing Come on. and separating, right. you know that man is more there than God. All right. Amen. Amen. My God, I said uh, that. Praise the right. Amen. Amen. I don't care what they try to sell you. I don't try to care how they try All to right. intimidate you. Uh -huh. I don't care how they try to make you look bad. When you see a body of people, a church, a movement, and there's more division in it, and they uh -huh. keep separating, All right. getting away from one another, uh -huh. won't bear, won't forbear, uh -huh. won't have charity, All right. whether that is more of man than it is. <coughs> oh, hallelujah. And, and, you, and the same thing opposite, Lord. when you see people coming together in the unity of the spirit, right. coming in the unity of the faith, hallelujah. you can see more God there hallelujah. than you can see man. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord. That's where I want to go. It's where more of God is Hallelujah. than where man is. Hallelujah. Uh, you'll be persecuted for that. You'll be prosecuted for that. But, but, but I don't want to go to where to see charity uh, doesn't work iniquity. Worketh no iniquity. Charity doesn't. When you see a spirit of iniquity where people are saying, I'm not of them, I'm against them. I'm not for them. They're out. I'm in. They're not part. I am. Uh, when you see that spirit, if it's in a local church or you see it in a movement, that spirit is not of God. All right. Amen. That's the reproach they have. And, and they'll seek to heal that reproach by coming together in one bread, eating their own bread, wearing their own apparel, but being called by that name. Having that name, and that name is powerful. The name of, of, of the man of sin is powerful. If you don't think it's powerful, wait until he decides to visit a community. Yeah. Amen. If he decided to come to Bradenton today, you'd see what would happen in Bradenton. From all the powers of government, police force would be affected. County Sheriff's Department would be affected. EMT would be affected. Homeland Security. The Homeland Security. The mayor would be affected. City council would be affected. You don't think that there's power in that in that one man? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. And Isaiah saw this in prophecy. So, all right. Do we have any more questions on that? Brother Rick. I just want to clarify. Now, the seven women, is that seven different church organizations joining with the Catholic? Seven is a perfect number, so that is a perfect number. However many there will be, they're called six, six, six. In other words, three, three separate uh, Pentecostalism will have a certain number, a perfect number. However, God determines when he's through letting them come together, if it's 30, if it's eight or 10, but it's seven, it's a perfect number. Uh, Protestantism will have a perfect number. Uh, in other words, perfect is the number that God decrees what it will be. If God decrees it's 20, that's a perfect seven before God. That's a perfect number. That's one six in Pentecostalism. Then there'll be six in Protestantism, because these are the three isms of Christian religion right now. That's the three isms. <coughs> so I you say that seven could be any number as long as right. it's not a perfect number. 
Right. It's a it's a number God's calls, and when He calls it, if it's five different organizations, if it's six different or ten, it's a number God allows to come together and say, "Let us eat our own bread, we're own apparel, but be called by Thy name." Wow, is it powerful, brother? I feel the presence of God. In this. I do too, because it's revelation. It's revelation. It's revelation. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. You, you won't. I'm going to say this right now. You won't find this teaching. Look for it. Search for it. You'll find it where a virgin church is. You'll find it where there's still a God-called minister and hasn't compromised the Word of God. You won't find it just by going and sitting down in a church, sitting down to hear a minister. You'll find it when there's a perfect, perfect understanding. Brother Steve. Um, I heard a minister just the other day talk about there was churches coming together and it was going to blend the Koran with the Bible. They will. They will because they cannot resist They're working on unity, but it's man's unity, yeah. not God's unity. They're searching for peace. In the wrong place. They're, they're searching for peace in the wrong place. And, and that's the same group of people that's in Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the first verse, when Paul said, uh, over when they shall say, when they shall say. Who are they? It's that perfect number of those seven women that come together to take away their approach with that one man. And Paul said, when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them when they say peace and safety. Said of the times and seasons, he was still talking on the coming of the Lord in 1 Thessalonians 5, just like he was in 1 Thessalonians 4. He was in 3. He was in 2 Thessalonians 2. Paul was still dealing with the coming of the Lord. And he said, in the fifth chapter of First Thessalonians, he said concerning uh, the times and seasons, uh, that's verse one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, moreover, when they, uh, concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you, knew, for you know perfectly well that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The thief in the night, that's the coming of the Lord. Yet it's taught out here in the church world, the church world teaches it, that the whole world is going to see him coming. Even a newspaper I read a few years ago, Hollywood film cannot be finished. The leading lady disappeared because Jesus took her. And she was taken in the coming of the Lord. Train runs off the track because the engineer was taken. Uh, what foolishness that is. You think God would destroy innocent people in a train by snatching an engineer out of the, uh, out of the, uh, what do they call that? The end? The, yeah. oh, the cab? Uh, yeah, the, uh, and let the train go off the track? Why, God's bigger than that, wiser than that. He's not so desperate to catch away his own. He's going to take to snatch somebody out of a train and kill a hundred people. What foolishness that is. And if that leading lady was like some of the leading ladies now, <laughs> uh, making her film, I'm afraid she wouldn't be in a condition to go with a bride and be taken in a moment, you know. So there's a lot of comment we can make on that. Tomorrow, Song, Song of Solomon, where it talks about um, Song of Solomon 6 and 8, there are three score concubines and four score, um, there are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins of that number, but my blood, my father, one, is that, can that be part of that, um, tied into that? Yes, that, the Song of Solomon, Sister Marlow, and the 8th verse, 6th chapter, is identically tied in with Revelations 13, teaching on the peace that comes up out of the sea, seven heads and ten horns, 
uh, and and the great harlot woman, Mystery Babylon, in Revelation 17, and the seven women in Isaiah 4, uh, that is directly tied in to his prophecy. He said there are, there are three score, that's 60, three score, that's number of men, six, 60, queens. Um, in the book of Revelations, Mystery Babylon is likened unto a queen that sits and said, I will see no sorrow. I will see no travail come upon me. Uh, that is a, that, that queen, that queen, you'll find her in the seat of the Vatican. She's called Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of Heaven. Is that what she's called? Isn't that what uh, uh, she's called? Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of Heaven. There are three score queens, that's man's number. And there's four score concubines. What is a concubine? A woman kept to have illegitimate relationship outside of marriage. Outside of marriage. In harlotry. A concubine only has a relationship in harlotry. False religion, false religion connected with a man of sin only has, only has relationship in religion illegitimately outside of the marriage of Christ. So there's three course queens and four score concubines. And then there's virgins, that is endless number of groups of people that are not connected to the man of sin, yet, yet, they're virgins. Now, that's, the, that's those that he will say, and I've never used it just this way, but I see this, Some he's going to say, come out of her, my people. Did you know all those people in those little virgin bodies that are not connected yet to the man of sin before his coming? They're going to get a cry to come out. Come out of her. Uh, virgins without number because they need to come in to the wise virgins. Yes. There's virgins without number. But there's wise virgins. But they don't. Pastor Marble, is that the reason uh, they have the virgins without number? Yes, the, the same doctor, and, and go ahead. And having that that, uh, that religious godly form and way about them, they'll desire to become one and have that great love that they think that it's really the truly love of God. And they'll become that's a, the one church universal government movement. Yes. Will, uh, appear from the face of the earth. Yes. The one church. And it becomes then the power of the beast mm -hmm. and the power of the dragon. Yes. And and it's magnified. That desire, where they don't said, in these uh, groups to be one and to say we're one with this great system. We're one with this power. It will finally become so overpowering until um, they'll, they'll give in. Uh, I, I had an experience with, a, with an attorney, and I really knew God was dealing with his heart and really working with him. And um, he um, finally, to make the story short, uh, he told me one day, very close to this attorney, and he said, uh, Brother Marlowe, Pastor Marlowe, I know you've been praying for me, that I would, I would come back the church and he told me I become disenchanted with the church and he left the church this attorney and uh, he said I know you've been praying and I said I've been praying you come visit us see what we're about but he never made it he said you know 
Not yet, and not up to this time. He could in the future. But he said, you know, Brother Marlowe, I admire the system that Rome has. I admire the form. I admire the beauty, the pageantry. I went and attended their services. And he said, I, I fell in love with the form they have, with the way they, they conduct with what they do. I said, so he said, next Sunday, I'm being baptized into that church. And I listened, and I thought about what John the Revelator said when he looked at this great woman, this woman uh, with the attire of the harlot, this great system of religion. He said, when I saw her, I wondered. I wondered. John, the Apostle John, saw this in vision, saw this system in prophecy. And the angel had to take John, take him out of his uh, orbit he was in <laughs> of this revelation and said, come, let me show you. Let me show you who she is. She's drunken with the blood of saints. Yes. Yeah. She's drunken with the blood of saints. Let me show you who she is. And I listened to that man and thought, why well, surely having a form of godliness. And it will if God doesn't reveal to you and show you the truth. All right. uh -huh. You'll look at the form of religion and you'll fall in love with a form of religion yes. and never see the godliness right. of the true church. It would, it would deceive the very elect if it were possible. Said he would deceive the very elect if it were possible. Matthew 24, 24. Matthew 24 and what's it? 24, 24. 24, 26. 24. 24 and 24. Matthew. Is that also Daniel 7.25? Um, I'm not sure, Sister Marlowe. He shall speak line. great words against the Most High. Pardon me? He said she shall speak words, great words against the Most High. Yeah, that's out. dealing with that office of the man of sin. And where are the saints of the Most High? Yes. That, that's dealing with that office of, of the man of sin. All right, Brother Tyler. Well, you know, the one thing I, I mean, I'm just going to speak out for myself. Right. I like to think of myself as a warrior of God, and that I fear nothing. But may I speak out truthfully, Pastor Marlo? Well, during, you know, in the cat, the one thing I never really cared for in the other churches is the fact that they pray to false idols, images of Mary, images, the false images of Christ that are made out of things that are not of God you know and also you know and and and, and you know that doesn't the Lord say that you know you know isn't he uh, now I'm going to another subject you know I, and that you know a, a gentleman actually came to me and said hey I can make you a priest he, they wanted to use me and I refused I said no 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 I'm not going to let you use me I'm not going to let you abuse your power, and I'm not going to abuse mine. I know the truth, and I see the truth. I will not follow you. I'm part of the true church. And so, you know, there, there's a temptation, but I refused it. No man can make you anything. Exactly. I will not, I will not yield to it. I will not bow down before what is false just because it's beautiful, just because man can make it that way. I mean, believe me, I hear very many songs that are very beautiful, very spiritual, but let me keep it in Christ where it belongs, but not in the falseness of man. However, didn't the Lord say that he would come as in the thief, as a thief in the night? Us not knowing, but us in our sleeps as a thief in the night to take us away up into the true kingdom? 
And then he will return back through the eastern gate with his army of angels to deal with this false church that's on the earth, and they will be the first ones he deals with. This is why I follow Christ, not man. Because man, no matter how beautiful and no matter how heavenly he makes it, the Lord, even Jesus said, do not try to imitate anything of heaven. Do not try to take or make anything from heaven as I described it to you and try to make it on the earth and make it your own as your own beautiful thing. And they use that to deceive. And you know, uh, you know, I, I love the Lord, but I will not be deceived by that. It all belongs to my father. Those will be the first men. Those will be the first people he deals with when he comes back. So I like to keep my eye on the true price, my treasures that are up in heaven, not for treasures in the storehouse. Very good, Brother Tom. Yes. Very good. Have you enjoyed us delving into Isaiah 4? Yes. Uh, we never got to start in Genesis, did we? I was thinking the same thing. So we, we, we have something coming up next week then. We can start in Genesis next week. Right. But if somebody has a question, we may start in Genesis the next week. Everybody's got some questions. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed it. I think it's been very profitable. Thank you for being hungry on a Monday evening, afternoon, uh, after a busy weekend. And thank you for coming. Time, this Bible study always amazes me that we always have such interest Monday night after Monday night. We have such interest in this Bible study. Uh, I, I praise God for it. Yes. I thank Him for the hunger for the Word of God in your hearts. So let's, uh, the band has come in, some of them have. And so may God bless you and go with God and have a good evening, every one of you. Uh, don't, don't let your head get down low at all. <laughs> Keep your head up despite all of life around you. Oh, God. Amen. <laughs> Tell your neighbors, uh, whoever your neighbor is, uh, tell them, uh, you know, you really love them tonight. And uh, they're a part of you and you're a part of them. God bless you. And you on the internet, we bid you goodbye. God bless you. I think we're all going to